Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors, or as I should say, 0 escape, 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and got our third ending, the submarine ending, and it wasn't a very happy one, it was quite the sad ordeal. Pretty much everyone died, except for one person seemingly, because... We thought we'd seen everybody's corpse, but it turns out that there was someone still there who stabbed us in the back, both metaphorically and literally. So, in this episode, we are going to start clicking through and trying to get, uh, trying to start our way to our first sort of main ending. Well, technically, kinda. You see, it's kinda weird how... It's kind of weird trying to count something as a main ending because there are six endings total and two of them are required, which is the next two endings that we're going to be getting. And the, but the previous ending that we got, the submarine ending, also sort of counts as a main ending because in both the DS version and the uh, the remake that was released later, both count those as big sort of main endings, which does make sense because there is information in the true ending that kinda doesn't make sense or leaves you scratching your head a bit if you didn't go through the submarine ending or at least if you didn't go through door three which leads to the submarine ending. But I'm gonna say that just for the excitement, this is our first main big ending. Not to say that you should skip all of the previous endings because those are also really good and they give you a lot of information. Uh, one thing that's uh, sort of uh, similar between all three is that someone is going around uh, killing a lot of people on the ship. In the axe ending, we saw Clover chop our arm off, as well as uh, chopping off either like the arms or the heads or something like that of Seven, uh, June, and Santa, I believe it was. And then in the knife ending, someone on the ship killed both Lotus and Junpei. And then, in the submarine ending, somebody killed pretty much everyone. So, something crazy is happening, and hopefully during this path we'll be able to get some answers to whatever the heck is going on here. One interesting piece of ZeroScape 999 media is the demo for the original DS version. It differs quite a bit in the... Uh, it differs quite a bit from the main game because in the demo, instead of Ye Junpei waking up on top of the bunks and then hitting his head and falling over, he instead wakes up on the ground and Jun is also in the room with us. And she wakes up on top of the bunk bed, hits her head and then falls down right directly on top of Junpei. We actually get that image of Jun on top of Junpei, you know, at that point. There are a couple of different uh, games where they'd have a demo that is like not actual gameplay from the game and is just completely different from what we see in the final game. Like uh, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, for example, that's sort of the same thing where uh, it's kind of similar to a puzzle from that game, but it also has some major differences that we never end up seeing in the final game. One thing that I've noticed about DS games is that I don't know how to describe this properly so I'll just use words and hope that my point, point gets across. DS images, like when I play DS games and then look at their ports onto modern consoles, the DS images feel, I don't know, a lot warmer I guess. I might have said this before at some point. But I generally like looking at DS, uh, the DS versions more, just because they give a more warm and comfortable feel, whereas uh, the ports to modern consoles feel a lot colder. Uh, you can see this example for, uh, of course, this game, 
uh, but also stuff like Ace Attorney and Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. And from what I've seen of the Ghost Trick Phantom Detective uh, remake, it still looks really, really good. I just really love the DS versions of these games. So now that we're getting up to our first choice with the doors, I'm actually going to be doing something different for this playthrough. Uh, this, is, instead of going through the four door like we always do with the three previous routes, instead, we're going to be going through the five door because, you know, it's kind of required that we go through this door. And I feel like it feels a lot more, I don't know if dramatic is the right word, but it feels a lot more fulfilling if we go through the five door uh, for this route. I might start uh, cutting through a lot of these scenes right here because, you know, it takes, I I'm not really good at coming up with uh, stuff to say, especially since we're seeing the same things over and over again. And plus, you know, we're just seeing the same things like I just said, so there's not too much uh, st interesting stuff going on on the screen at the moment. Don't worry though, we'll be going through a puzzle room in this episode, so you won't have to worry out on missing out on too much content or the episode being short. This will be a fairly long episode, although you can already tell that because obviously you're watching this on YouTube and you can see the runtime when you click on the video. Alright, it's time for us to see all new dialogue that we haven't at all seen before in this playthrough. Decided that it had to be door 5. Hey, wait! Junpei's cry echoed across the room. The four people walking toward the door stopped and turned back toward him. I want to go through door 5 too. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when Jun spoke up. What? What are you saying, Jumpy? If you're going through that door, then I'm going with you. He turned around to look at her. No, you can't. I can't take you with me. Why? Well, we're... Well... You know what's in there, don't you? Are you sure you want to see that? June opened her mouth as if to say something, but instead closed it again and looked at the floor. Junpei felt an ache in his chest at her clear distress, but the choice was not his to make. There was nothing else he could do. Junpei turned away from June and doing his best to silence his turbulent emotions. Please, let me go into door five. Seven scratched his head and looked at the young man. Man, now we're right back where we started, you know that? Junpei's bracelet is five, right? If we are going to add Junpei, then we must subtract five from the rest of us. Snake turned to Ace. Ace, please take good care of Clover. Oh, alright. That's, that's fine. One plus four is five. Don't go away! You need to listen to me, Clover. Go to door four with the others. No! Don't be so selfish! Snake's tone was harsh. Tears welled up in Clover's eyes. She bit her lip and did her best to fight them off. Snake's expression softened. He put his arms around Clover. He held her close and whispered to her ear. You'll be fine. Just relax. It looked as though he whispered two or three more words, but whatever they were, Junpei couldn't hear them. He couldn't help but wonder what the other man had said. Snake pulled back from his sister, his eyes kind and inquiring. Okay, I understand. Her voice was barely audible from where Junpei stood. Before long, new teams were assembled. Those going to door 5, 7, Snake, and Junpei. 7 plus 2 plus 5 equals 14, 1 plus 4 equals 5. Those going to door 4, Lotus, Santa, June, Ace, and Clover. 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 1 plus 4 equals 22, 2 plus 2 equals 4. 7, Snake, and Junpei scanned their bracelet, their numbered bracelets in quick succession. The screen of the red showed three asterisks. Alright then, let's go. Junpei glanced around one last time, his hand resting on the lever of the red. Okay, please be careful. Concern was written plainly across her face. Junpei looked her in the eye and gave what he hoped was a reassuring nod. He pulled the lever. With the sharp clack of a lock releasing, the door swung open. 
ahead of them in the small hallway were the pitiful remains of the ninth man. For a moment, Junpei froze. Try as he might, his eyes would not leave the corpse, and his feet would not leave the floor. Seven, too, seemed paralyzed. Snake, on the other hand, seemed unconcerned. He walked calmly down the bloody hallway and only stopped when he realized his companions were not following. Do you intend to kill me? I assume that you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? He hadn't even bothered to turn around. His head was, at most, slightly cocked toward one shoulder. Junpei and Seven looked at one another, nodded, and threw themselves through the door. As they did, a cold tone sounded from the left wrists of all three men. Seven and Junpei looked down at their bracelets. On both of them, and on snakes, a red skull had flickered to life. The detonator had begun its countdown. They'd scarcely pr processed this information when... So weird seeing the bloody door. With a metallic slam, the numbered door behind them swung shut. Unless they could find the device that would deactivate the detonators on their wrists, they would not be leaving the hallway. Hey! Where's the dead? The fear and urgency in Seven's face reflected what all three of them had felt. Junpei spun around, searching desperately for the dead. He found it easily enough. It was on the wall next to the closed door labeled 5. Found it! Right here! As he yelled, he struck the scanner with his hand. The other two scrambled to follow suit. As soon as they finished, Snake threw the lever down. Whew. Well, it looks like it stopped. As he spoke, Junpei wiped the sweat from his forehead with a trembling hand. Goddamn thing's gonna give me a heart attack. A muscle stood out in Seven's neck, and the corners of his mouth were twitching. Jumpy, are you alright? Are you guys okay? They could hear an anxious they could hear anxious voices, muffled but distinct, from the other side of the door. Yeah, we're fine. The detonators have been deactivated. They heard relieved sighs, and even through the door the three men could feel the tension disperse. Alright, we're moving on. Be careful, okay? I'll... okay. Sure thing. They heard footsteps moving away, and before long they were alone again. Junpei looked around. The hallway hit a dead end 20 or 30 feet from where they stood. A thick iron wall blocked their way. Try as they might to force it, the wall refused to move. To the left, however, was a wooden door that looked positively inviting by comparison. In the middle of it was a plaque that read First Class. A uh, First Class Cabin, huh? Well, it seems like it. Let's have a look then, shall we? Without hesitation, Snake, do Snake opened the door and stepped inside. Seven followed closely behind him. Junpei moved to follow them as well, but... He stopped, just short of the threshold, and looked back, not knowing why. Lying in the small hallway was a man's body, or at least what was left of it. He tried hard to avoid looking at the grisly scene, but it just wouldn't leave his mind. What had once been a man's internal organs now looked like so much vomit, as though someone had chewed up and spit out the better part of his torso. It was hideous, but worse still, it was cruel. It was hard to believe the thing on the floor had once been a human. The black pool of thick blood... The lumps of glistening flesh spread across the floor, the awkward twisted tangle of shredded intestines, the head wrenched to some grotesque unnatural position. The man's glasses lay next to his head, the lenses were cracked and the frame bent and distorted, and next to the glasses lay a bracelet, the number 9 still displayed on its face. Lastly, let us discuss how to remove the bracelets, there are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from the ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confines of the ship or detects that it's where his heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. <laughs> Suddenly, Junpei felt his stomach convulse and a knot of muscle gripped his throat. He clapped his hands over his mouth and ran to the first class cabin. The atmosphere changed immediately. 
The room was gorgeous, and despite the apparent age of the ship, none the worse for wear. He looked around. Seven and Snake were nowhere to be seen. There were two doors on the right side of the room. He opened the one on his right and went through. On the other side of the door was a short hallway. He jogged down the hallway, opened the door at the other end, and peeked through. They were there, to his right, busy examining something. He stepped through the door and walked toward them. What's up? Check this out. We found this thing here on the floor. Door. We found this thing here on the door. The red light's on. Does that mean it's locked? So I would assume. Is there any other way out? We looked around a little. Other than this door, we didn't find anything. So you're telling me that unless we can open this door, we won't be going anywhere. Junpei stepped away from the door and looked around the room. The room they were in looked like a bedroom. He figured the room he'd originally entered was the living room, or whatever passed for one on a ship. Alright, let's find a way to open this door. Come on, guys! Alrighty, the first class cabin. Uh, first thing we want to do is go ahead and check on this bed real quick. And we find a score plate. Specifically an A score plate. I see. This feels like glass. A rectangular plate of glass. Is there something written on the surface? Yeah, it's a sheet of music with a couple of A notes. Just A's. Yeah, that's it. Kinda weird, huh? Transparent music score sheet, apparently made from glass. It has a number on the a number of A notes on it. It took Junpei by surprise. Snake, usually so calm and collected, suddenly began to move. He stared about the room almost frantically, clearly looking for something. No, Junpei thought, not staring. After all, he's blind. Blind or not, Snake was clearly attempting to do something. At last, Junpei could no longer contain his curiosity. What are you doing? Snake waited a moment before answering. I heard something strange. Something strange? Ah, well, never mind. It doesn't seem to be anything suspicious. I don't wish to toot my own horn, but my auditory senses are considerably more advanced than those of most humans. I notice even the slightest of noises. Alright, are you going to tell me you can hear a needle drop from a mile away? Huh! No, such a thing would be impossible. However, by listening to the sound of footsteps and breathing, as well as the sound echoing off of the environment, I can locate most objects. Oh yeah, that's right. When Clover fell on the big staircase a little while ago, you were at her side immediately. So that was... Hmm. Yes, I could hear it happening. In fact, I can run quite fast. Certainly as fast as you. And should someone attempt to start a fight with me, I am confident that I can that I could defeat them. Junpei was somewhat taken aback by this revelation. He stared at Snake, skeptical. You don't believe me, do you? Care to give me a try? I must warn you, you'll no doubt re regret it. Well, I suppose that's enough playing around. Let's resume our search, shall we? With a small, self-satisfied smile, Snake turned and walked away from Junpei. On this route, we do get to see a bit more of Snake and Seven, which is really awesome, because they're two of my favorite characters in this game. What's this? This isn't a score. Is this a map of the ship? A map? There's a map of the ship here? Yeah. Then I imagine it will prove very helpful. You'd best hold on to it, Junpei. Okay. It's now possible to use the map screen. Sweet, so no matter what door you go in at the start, you will always get a map. Open up this cabinet and we get a score plate C. Anyways, we want to go ahead and move back to the living room area of sorts over here. There is a fireplace with, which, with what looks to be another score on there. And if we move right, we have a vase. I get it, you're going to use this vase, right? That's pretty clever, Junpei. We just gotta fill this thing with water. What? What are you talking about? 
Oh man, you don't get it? Just grab that vase and take a look around. You'll find- you'll figure it out soon enough. Looks like a vase. Maybe you could use that. A vase. It could probably hold quite a bit. Now, Seven seems to know something about that vase, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, look at that in a second. But if we look at the score plate, it's a rectangular piece of glass. You can see right through it. It has a couple of G-notes written on it. Uh, I wonder what that means. So a funny bit of dialogue that you can actually get is if you go ahead and take the vase, go back over to the room with Snake in it, and examine it. A vase! Where did you find this? Over in the kitchen. I see. Well, I suppose that might be useful for bludgeoning Seven over the head. It's not what we're using it for. So what the vase is actually for is if we go into the bathroom here, we can look at this, and there's a lot of dirty water in it. Uh, if we go ahead and scoop some up into the vase, the bathtub's full of gross, cloudy water. Yeah, if we fill the vase up, then we could toss it. Huh? Not really sure what he's saying. Whatever. Let's just get this vase full of water. Hey, Junpei, what are you doing over there? Only one thing to do now that you got the thing full of water. Come on, what are you waiting for? Huh? Take what down? The vase is full of water from the bathtub. I actually want to go back to Snake's room again, because if you examine it... So, you filled the vase with water, have you? I assume you intend to dump it on Seven's head. Hmm, not a bad idea. Very well, I would appreciate it if you would put this plan into action post-haste. For some reason, Snake just really wants to murder Seven. I don't know why. I want to go ahead and dump the water into here. This is what Seven was talking about. Alright, time to put this fire out. About time, buddy. Let's do it. Here we go. Ha 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 ha! Good job. Another success. That fire didn't stand a chance. Alright, I'll just put this out now. Don't want to get burned, so let's pull down the sleeves. Yeah, and we've got the score plate. It's a ceramic plate of some kind. It looks like a blank sheet of music. Sort of photo proto score on the ceramic plate. Looks like a blank sheet of music. As soon as Junpei tucked the plate into his pocket, Seven cried out and stumbled, his balance lost. He threw out a hand and caught the wall in time to steady himself and avoid the floor, but his face was flushed and he looked startled. Hey, Seven, what the hell was that? Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I just felt a little dizzy, that's all. Seven rubbed a couple of fingers across his brow and then shook his head as if to clear it. What the hell's wrong with me? First memory loss, now I'm getting dizzy for no reason. Memory... loss? Junpei couldn't hide the surprise in his voice. Seven, for his part, seemed unconcerned. Right, guess I haven't told you, have I? Told the rest of them, but that must have been before you showed up. Well, the long and short of it is that I don't remember Jack from before I woke up here. Didn't realize I hadn't told you. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You're talking about amnesia, right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, why are you an amnesiac? What happened to you? If I, do, if I knew that, I wouldn't really be one, would I? Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Junpei paused for a moment and stared at Seven. Are you telling the truth? Huh? Well, you look pretty calm for somebody who doesn't remember anything. If you've really got amnesia, shouldn't you be, like, upset or confused or something? Well, sure, I mean, I was pretty confused when I woke up down on D-Deck, but uh, that was a while ago. I've had some time to get used to it. After a while, I figured it wasn't worth the trouble of worrying about it. After all, why worry about something I can't change? Well, people don't usually stay amnesiacs forever. I figure it'll work out itself out eventually. That's... that's it? That's it. Alright, that's enough talking for now. Let's get back to wake. Seven gave Junpei a look that the younger man wasn't sure how to interpret, and turned to walk away. Somehow, though, Junpei didn't find his reassurances very reassuring. So that is something that's a bit different on this route, is that we actually learn about Seven's amnesia a bit early. And so later, when 
7 talks about his amnesia, we won't be as confused. A music stand. Might as well put the music I found on it. Put the ceramic plate on the bottom, and the glass plates on top. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Well, I put them all on top of each other, but they look odd. It doesn't really look like a song. Hmm. Then in all likelihood, we haven't found them all. We need to find more glass plates. I always forget, whenever I'm playing through this game again, I always forget one. It's totally a table with a mirror. Ah, yes, you know, that sort of thing is known as a vanity. Were you aware of that, Junpei? Of course, vanity also refers to self-love, conceit, and narcissism. As such, you can say that every day, when a woman looks into one of these, she's staring at her own conceit and narcissism. Doesn't that strike you as terribly sad? Alrighty. Ah, right, I, I remember where the extra one is. If we go back into the bathroom and we pull this plug, there's a plug on the end of the chain. Alright, why don't we just drain this water? Yeah, good plan. Alright, where's that thing? Good tug ought to be enough to get it out. Huh? There we go, and I'm pretty sure that's the last one that we need. So we move back, and now we should be able to go ahead and... A music stand. Seems as good a place as any to put this music we found. We just gotta put the ceramic plate on the bottom. And then stack the glass plates on top of it. Alright, good. Sweet. Now I can play the music. Junpei, would you be so kind as to play the piano? I am unable to, you see. I'm sure I need, need tell you, but the keys on this piano are not what you might expect them to be. C won't be C, D won't be D, and so forth. You must listen carefully to determine which keys to strike. Do you understand? Yeah. Alright, let's give it a shot. So just like Snake said, the keys on this are a bit off. So if you want to know the order to press the keys to get the correct song, go ahead and just follow what I do. And we're done. Music is not my forte. Get it? Wait, what was that noise? Junpei, we did it. Looks like it worked. I heard something unlock over by the exit. Let's go. Good plan. Stand, bow, be seated. Well, I guess he hasn't forgotten that. At least Snake thinks it's funny. <laughs> ah, yes, I suppose that was the classroom bell, wasn't it? I don't imagine that's what Zero was thinking of, however. No, no, Zero almost certainly meant to suggest Westminster, not middle school. Westminster? The palace in London that plays host these days to the House of Parliament. You've heard of Big Ben, the famous clock tower, yes? Big Ben plays that very collection of notes on the hour. London. The capital of England, huh? At any, at any rate, the door is now unlocked. Let's leave this place immediately. And so we shall just turn over once, and then we can walk right out the door. All right, let's go. And with that, we are going to end off this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.